On today's show from the hit NB series, California Dreams, please welcome Aaron Jackson. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you guys are enjoying your time right now. But I mean, like, let's just like kick back for the next, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. And let's just, let's have fun, right? <laughs> Everyone, welcome to the Mike Grant Show. And today's special guest is from the hit NBC series California Dreams. He played Mark Winkle. Please welcome Aaron Jackson. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Hey, Mike, how are you, brother? Good. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So, we're going to have a great time today, everybody. So, the first question I have for you, Aaron, is let's take it all the way back to the beginning before we start talking about California Dreams. Can you let us know how you got started in acting? Oh, you want to go way back, like way back. Like, um, I, I guess my first gig um, when I was I was in Pittsburgh, my dad took me out to an audition when I was like seven. But I guess it starts a little bit before that. My father was on the on the radio for my entire my entire youth. And uh, I remember sitting in the radio station. My dad was a jock and uh, I'd be sitting there and, you know, my dad's got this big microphone, and this big red light. And right before the microphone was getting ready to go on, he'd scream, Mike, you know, like as if like the big red light didn't tell us that the microphone was on. But nonetheless, he would scream Mike. And then every time he would scream Mike, me and my sisters would always try to get something in right when the microphone came on just to kind of embarrass my dad. So then uh, my dad asked me the first time to, to come on the radio with him. And, um, you know, and sit on his lap and, and introduce a song. And I got to introduce um, La Bamba was uh, what I got to introduce, which was kind of cool, Richie Valens. And um, so that was kind of like my first, like, I, I guess, bite into like uh, an audience, if you will. Um, but after that, uh, my father found out that, that with uh, me being on the radio and being silly and, and, and a child that I was, um, he was like, hey, you know, my kid might do good on camera. Let's try something. So I went out for a, a, a local commercial for a, a small company called Waterbed Willies, which was this waterbed company. And um, I walked into this audition, stupid story, but I'll tell you. Um, and, and there was a big waterbed there. And uh, the, the director of it says, um, so kid, what I want you to do is I want you to get up on this bed. I want you to jump up and down. And I want you to say, I love waterbed willies. So I looked at this bed and I looked at my dad. I said, can I? You do what you got to do, kid. So I got up and down and I started jumping up and down on this bed and I screamed, I like waterbed willies. And I got hired to do this really stupid local commercial. And I loved it. I, I loved the, 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 the idea of just being entertaining and, and being silly. And it, it was never about the money. It was never about that. It was just more so about the, you know, just, just having fun. So that was like my first audition. And then shortly thereafter, my dad, um, sent me to, we got an agent and then I, I booked my first uh, national commercial, which was a Pepsi commercial with Paul Rodriguez, where he played Pepsi man and I played Pepsi junior pup or whatever I was, um, silly thing. And then uh, I, I got my first real feature film audition, which was for a, a feature called Lorenzo's Oil with Nick Nolte and Susan Sarandon. That was kind of the catapult that, that really started my career. Um, and I was, I was 14 when I booked that. So that was kind of where it all started lot in between there and a lot of, of struggles and I don't know that I understood the struggles as much as you know um, my dad did but I just I just went out and I had fun That's all I did. And where did you grow up? Did you grow up like in California, New York? No, no I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the melting pot of America. Um, we had a huge industry back then, you know back in the day I mean Lorenzo's Oil was filming and then Bob Roberts, Innocent Blood, Joey Coyle and Hoffa were all filming all at the same time in Pittsburgh. Um, so I, working on Lorenzo's Oil, uh, Susan, uh, her husband, uh, Tim, or I guess at the time boyfriend, um, they were doing Bob Roberts. And so Susan made a phone call to, to Tim and was like, hey, so I got this, this kid, you know, he's kind of cool, whatever, whatever. So I went over and I did like five days on Bob Roberts. And then uh, Valerie Bertinelli was there as well. So I ended up doing a couple of days on Innocent Blood. And then Striking Distance was going on with Bruce Willis. So I got like three days on Striking Distance. Um, and then Bob Hoskins um, was in town shooting um, Passed Away. 
And again, I kind of like backdoored myself or someone backdoored me in, into that one. So I did like six features in like, like six months, seven months. Like <laughs> it was unheard of back then. You know, so that, that so it was, it, was a, it was a pretty cool market that I lived in. And then how did you wind up getting cast in California Dreams? Because you actually came in during the third season. So California Dreams was actually right. just like a save by the bell type show, except with music um, is how you could describe yeah. it. It was part of the TNBC lineup is what they called it, the Saturday morning block right. then. And you played Mark Winkle, who was Sly's cousin. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got cast and as well as your character? I, um, I was in London at the time. Um, and I was in college and I moved back to the United States and I, I woke up one morning, decided that I think the smartest adventure for me would be to move to Los Angeles. So I packed up my Eagle Talon TSI Turbo and my next door neighbor and um, I moved to LA. And I, I honestly, Mike, I had no business moving to LA. I didn't have a window or a pot to pee in or a window to throw it out of when I went out there. I had no, I had no contacts. I had no agent. I had nothing, literally. Um, I had had a, a few people to contact, but I, I had no guaranteed solidified, you know, path or journey. So I get out to LA and I met with, uh, I met with a manager and it, it's quite a funny story. I walk into this manager's office and I had no idea who she was. Her name was Beverly Dean. No clue who this lady was. And I walk in there and I'm sitting in the, in the waiting room and there's this three other people sitting in the waiting room. Um, a girl by the name of Phoebe Cates. No idea who this woman was at the time. Another guy by the name of Jim Caviezel. No clue who he was. And then another dude by the name of Kevin Sorbo. And, you know, so obviously Kevin Sorbo went on to be Hercules and Jim Caviezel went on to do, you know, um, his, you know, amazing career. And so I'm sitting in there and, and she, she just looks at me and she goes, so, so why do I, why do I want to represent you? And I'm like, I, I, I honestly don't know why you'd want to represent me. I mean, you've got these other good looking people in the, in the room outside there. I don't know what it is that I have. And she goes, are, are you any good? And I said, I, I think I am. And she goes, well, well, we'll put that to the test, you know, kind of scenario. And then she, uh, she was friends with Peter Engel, which was the executive producer of my show. And um, she had heard that there was an audition and she made a call to Peter. And next thing I know, I had an audition um, alongside with, you know, a couple hundred other kids that, that were also auditioning for the same role. And I, I, I did something that somebody else didn't do. You know, I, I was in the right place at the right time. And I was lucky is really what I was. And when I got cast, I mean, I, we were, they were, they were third season. You know, and that, that's always rough as an actor to come into an existing show, um, a, a, a popular show at the time as well. I mean, Saved by the Bell was such a huge success for, for Peter Engel and, and for all of NBC and, and the TNBC lineup was, was just fantastic. And, uh, you know, Good Morning Miss Bliss was successful into uh, Bell. And then when they brought out Dreams, I mean, it just it, it was it was literally Saved by the Bell with a band really what it was it had the same elements the same you know the same storylines you know that that the audience really wanted to see and when I got cast I I I didn't replace anybody but there was cast members that were no longer there so I didn't have to assume somebody else's role so they brought me in as Sly's cousin but the you know the more dignified the more you know uh back then the more you know a proper term would have been you know the more educated or the the, the, the not so silly type character so I always had a button down on and it was always buttoned to the top and, and my hair was had this big, long swooping hair. And I was literally the, the polar opposite to what Michael's character was, to what Sly was. So he was, he was the bad Winkle and I was the good Winkle. So I, uh, I, I was brought in as, as one of the band's lead singers and um, I, I played the, the keyboards on the show and um, it, was, it was a wild journey, man. It was a, it was a wild journey, it really was coming into an already established cast how did they make you feel welcome and how long um did it take you to maybe feel like you know i i feel like this is a home for me yeah i i will be very honest and i think you know everyone's got some cliche answer on on something like that but uh it was day one like it really was we we had uh our publicist at the time set up obviously the the pre-promotion on on the, the photo sessions for all the teen mags and so we had to do this big publicity stunt as, as complete strangers. And Diana Uribe and I, and then Christian, uh, for life of me, I can't remember Christian's last name. Um, he was a new, new boy replacing on Saved by the Bell. And the four of us went out and we did this, this, this photo op. And I, I, we went to some ice cream parlor, riding bikes and doing all these other silly things. And then a week later, 
um, uh, we were told that we were doing a, a gig at Disney and uh, to, to come out and do some photos. So they, you know, obviously, you know, set that all up for us. And that was really the first meeting that I had had with, with Kelly, Jenny, William, Jay, and Michael. And I knew Diana, so I kind of had like an ally walking in, if, if you will. But there was no other meeting prior than to, hey, this is your new family. Um, and I, I think Kelly was probably the first uh, to, to kind of open arm me into the, into the family. And, and then Jay right afterwards, uh, William was, you know, William was younger than us then. Um, I apologize, this is going crazy. Uh, sorry, apologize. Um, there were, um, William was younger than us. So he kind of was kind of just like this, this open armed always. And then Michael and I, it took Michael and I a little bit of time to actually truly have the bond that we do now. Uh, just because I think it was like we were we were the Winkles and and so I, he, he kind of had his path and I had my path and I stayed in my path for as long as I could with with Michael because um, we have we've always had this love hate relationship I think he love hated me love hating me and I hated loving him kind of scenario and um, but we, we all it, it was literally it was instant family you know and you know, when you're working with someone for that long, um, for that many hours a day, for, for, for as long as we did, we had no choice but to be, to be friends, you know, and to be a family. Yep. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the cast really quick with you. And if you can say if there's any sort of memory, special thing that comes to mind when I mention the person's name. So we'll start off with Diana because she started the same time as you. So right. do you have any memories of, or what's your favorite memory of Diana? Yeah. I, I think, you know, for me and Di, I, we, we were the new kids on the block, if you will. So, I mean, like she, she was, she, she was the, my, my go-to, you know, and, and I, I was 20 years old, 19 years old. And, and, you know, I just moved to Hollywood. I hadn't been there, you know, I was there less than a month, you know, when, when this all kind of all ensued. And then two months into me being there, I, I booked the gig. And um, so Diana and I had a really quick bond, but then I think once she got in, with the girls, um, I got in with the boys, but Diane and I, um, we, we were cool from the get. And so I, I don't know that I have any specific memory of Di and I, I just know that, that we auditioned the same day. And I remember, um, you know, when we both found out, you know, uh, seeing each other that first time running back to each other and giving a huge hug. I remember that much. Yep. And just really quick, uh, neither of us mentioned this, but she, her character was Lorena. Just so Lor Yes, Lorena. She, she was Lorena. Lorena. And then Kelly Packard played Tiffany. So yes. what are your what are your memories of her? I absolutely head over heels love Kelly. Um, Kelly was was uh, she was truly the first one in the cast because she was just you know anyone that knows Kelly knows that she is just like the the kindest sweetest you know like like she, she, she's just she's perfect you know she's just she's an amazing young lady um that, that that i don't think she has a mean bone in her body like i don't she doesn't understand the word hate because it's not in her vocabulary um and and she constantly um a, a constant professional but but just you know always had a a, a, a funny corks smile or something silly to to make you laugh or to, to break any any odd moments um but yeah she's uh, Kelly is, and we, I just, well, we'll get into that later, but I just saw Kelly and, and Michael and, and William and Jenny uh, a year and a half ago. And it was like, we never stopped. You know, but we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute. So that was like a teaser. Teaser! <laughs> and Jay, who played Jake Summers. Oh, Jay Anthony Frankie. Um, Jake and I, or Jay and I had, um, we, we had a pretty co uh, pretty cool bond. Um, we, we had our, we had our, you know, uh, we had our dressing rooms, right? And our, we, our dressing room hall shared a dressing room hall with Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, so I like Fresh Prince was on one side of the hall. Dreams was on the other side of the hall. And my room was closest to Will's room because Will had like, he had the fat suite, you know, he had like the, the grand poopaw of, of dressing rooms that we had these small little, you know, comparatively speaking, like closets to what he had, but they were still huge. I mean, they were, they were bigger than most people's apartments in New York or how big these dressing rooms were, it was crazy. Um, but I, I remember we used to play uh, Sega Genesis, <laughs> I'll never, and we used to play Mortal Kombat. And so like, we'd have a break, like we'd, we'd be like rehearsing and then they'd give us like these breaks and Michael, William and Jay and I would just run literally from the set to my dressing room or to uh, Jay's dressing room to play Mortal Kombat. I don't know why we loved it so much, um, but we would run back to there. 
Jay and I had, um, we had a heart, we had a love for Harleys. Um, we had a love for animals and, um, Jay was the bad boy in, in, on the show. And I was kind of the bad boy, if you will, off the show. I mean, I rode Harleys, you know, um, I had tattoos, you know, I was, um, I smoked, you know, I, and my character, Mark was, oh, he was, you know, he was the straight A student, you know, valedictorian type kid. And here's me off camera, you know, I'm riding a Harley and smoking cigarettes, you know, so, um, but Jay and I had a really, um, to this day, still have a really awesome bond. Um, you know, we, we, we Facebook and we IM and we text um, on a regular, regular basis. So. William, who played Tony Wicks. Dr. Jones now, you know, uh, it was funny, Peter Engel used to call him, uh, we did an episode where he played um, uh, a king, you know, um, and uh, he, he always used to say, it's good to be the king, William, it's good to be the king. Um, William, after the show went on to be, a, you know, obviously a, a very successful um, doctor that he is, but he, who always would joke around, would always, you know, but like, funny jokes, just being silly and, and um, you know, breaking, breaking the monotony of, of, of just rehearsal and work. Um, so William, a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. Um, his whole family was wonderful. Michael Cade, who played oh. Sly. <laughs> Michael Cade. What can one say about Michael? Um, I thought you'd save him for last. Uh, Michael, <laughs> If you could keep his shirt down, first of all, because he was so proud of, of that, that eight pack that he had that made all of us jealous. Um, Michael had fooled around. That, that's all Michael did. Like uh, on camera, he was amazing, but, but off camera, he, he always had some, some kind of smart aleck comment to say to me or, or, or pick on me because I was the newbie. Um, but uh, we, we hung out regularly, all of us. And, and Michael was, um, you know, Michael's a good kid, you know, and he's, well, he's not a kid anymore, but he was, he was older than me and, you know, still is older than me, Michael, if you're watching. And Jenny Kwan, who played Samantha Wu. Jenny Kwan, I, you know, she was so ridiculously talented and so small and dainty and sweet. She was like pocket size. You know what I mean? Like literally she was like this big. Um, her and Kelly were like besties. Like, so wherever Kelly was, Jenny was and vice versa. And then Diana kind of worked into that. And, and um, I used to listen and love to listen to Kelly and Jenny sing. That's all they would do when, when we weren't rehearsing, they were off in the corner singing, doing something. Uh, and I just, I just spoke to Jenny um, not too long ago as well. You know, so she's, so she was, she was like family. They all are good family. And what I don't think a lot of people may know is you actually didn't sing in the show. You know, for, for a lot of years, we never really told that side of the story, did we? Um, no, Stephen Terrell voiced me, and um, there was a couple of, of episodes where, where uh, Jay and I had to sing just because it was acapella and we had to, and we were, I, I don't know if Jay was, but I was auto-tuned six ways to Sunday, I know that for a fact. Um, I remember uh, uh, Franco Barrio, which was one of our producers, um, when I got cast, he was like, oh, Aaron, do you sing? And I'm like, yeah, do I sing? Of course I do, I sing, yeah. I, I, I just, uh, you know, uh, I think I, I, I just, what did I do? It was... Um, uh, I did Guys and Dolls in high school, and I started rattling off all these shows that I had done in high school. And it's like, but no, but you sing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I sing. You know, I, I played that Elvis character in, in that, you know, um, Bye Bye Birdie. I, I can sing. And he goes, can you send me a tape? And I'm like, yeah. So I, I remember calling my dad and, and asking him to get a VHS tape of, of me singing in, in um, Bye Bye Birdie. Yeah, I never got to sing on the show. Not quite sure why. Um, yeah, so no, but, but Stephen, you know, uh, Stephen did, did my voice and, um, and then Barry uh, did, did some of mine as well. And uh, I, I wish I could have sang as well as they did. We lip sync really good. I did. Yeah, and, and, and you guys had a lot of awesome songs that you guys uh, performed on the show. You guys even had a soundtrack at the time. Now, yeah. what many people may not have known, which I kind of, when going back and seeing these episodes now, you can kind of hear it because some of the same people who wrote the song, How Do You Talk to an Angel yeah. by, the Heights, by the Heights, you can hear it in some of the songs that you perform. Yeah. I'm like, this sounds like they're about to sing How Do You Talk to an Angel? Yeah. It's like the yeah. same musical, you know, melody there and everything. Our, our, our songwriters were amazing, you know, and I, w so many people have said over the years to, to us as, as a cast, um, how California dreams changed their life. You know, how 
we, we raised them. We were their youth. You know, we got them through so many problems, you know, and, you know, I, I still go back and, and, and think of all the episodes that we did and, and how we did what we did and, and the blessings that we had to be in the position that we were, you know, I mean, I was just a, I was a 19 year old kid from Pittsburgh, you know, that, that, that I, I just moved to LA cause I wanted to act. And then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm, um, you know, uh, on a television series, on, a, on an international television series. And then you start meeting the fans and they're like, you know, that drinking and driving episode that you did with Tara Reed, you know, that made me think twice before, you know, before I ever did that. And, you know, and when, and when, when Tiffany was doing steroids, you know, and, and then, you know, and, oh, and the racism episode, you know, where we were talking, you know, like that really, and I was just like, I don't think any one of the seven of us knew at the time, the impact that we actually could have. So, so back to the music that, that you brought up, um, the music for me was what the show was because if you watched an episode, our songs wrapped up what that whole episode was about. And my oldest daughter um, graduated, um, when, my, when my oldest daughter graduated, I remember using the last gig song for my daughter's graduation video, I'm glad I was there. And I used that in her thing, you know, in her graduation video, to the point now where the school that she that she went to, they ended up using it again for another graduation video. You know, so it was like, and, and we're talking 25 years later, you know? Uh, so, so our music was, I mean, that, that was the crutch in the show. That's what made us different. You know, we were, we were the, the, the 1980 or 90s and 2000s version of the Partridge family. You know, we were the monkeys. We were, you know, we were that, you know? And, and you know, and then you had a few other spinoffs thereafter, but I don't think any, and may, maybe it's arrogant to say this, but I don't know that any show that had music like that really up until Glee really had the following that we did, you know, and, and granted, I mean, it was, it was a different time. I mean, you had it, six out of seven of the, of the cast were beautiful. And then there was Michael I'm kidding. Um, no, I mean, we, we were all good looking kids and we all, we had passion and we loved our fans and we would go out in the public. So I think that's what kept our show where it did. I mean, that, that's what, would, what made it so successful was the fans, you know? Yeah. And, and did you have a favorite song? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, my, we'll always have Aspen episode was, was, was one of my favorites, you know? Um, and then I, I think the, the hardest and, and the best one for me was probably um, take it higher was, was a great one, but the last gig, um, you know, that, that song, that episode was, was very hard for all of us, you know, um, I'm glad I was there, but I, there, there wasn't really one that I didn't like, you know, we, uh, it was, we, we, cause we constantly recycled the songs as well. I mean, we had about 16 that, that I, that I was either singing leads or, or, or co-leads with Jay. And then obviously Kelly and Jenny had their, their songs that they were leads on. But I, I, uh, I don't think there was one that I didn't like, but um, I'm glad I was there was probably my favorite when it comes down to it. Take it higher is up there as well. Yeah. I think I can guess the answer for this one, but let's ask you, which one was your favorite episode? I mean, I, Aspen, yeah, that was, that was, that was my favorite. I, but, you know, um, Follow Your Dreams was probably my, my other favorite one. And it was just because we shot them. We didn't shoot them in sequential order, right? We sang my first episode that aired actually was my second episode that I filmed. My first one was um, Follow Your Dreams. And that was when Mr. Belvedere was on there. And it was the flower shop episode. Yeah, yeah. And, Mr. And, Belvedere. And I remember meeting Mr. Belvedere and I don't have it on today, but I, I, I normally do. He gave me a St. Genesius, um, this little pendant, which was the actor's patron. He gave it to us as a cast, like each one of us, this, this small little trinket of a, of, of a necklace. And I wore it, Mike, I'm not kidding, 25 years. Like I wore it every day. And then when he passed, I mean, that was, and I didn't know him, but he was like, he was really like the, the first like on camera, like celebrity, if you will, that I had worked with um, on the television show. You know, I had worked with, with the handful of the celebrities in the films, but when it came to, to, to our episodic, he was a guest star on our show. You know, it wasn't like I was guest starring, he was on our show. And um, he was such an awesome man. It was just so, so amazing. Um, I, I enjoyed that one because it was my first time, right? It was my first time on, on, on sets and, and really, you know, living this, this, 
this dream come true, I guess. And then my episode with Eddie Mecca was pretty awesome. The big ragu from Laverne and Shirley, you know, to have him on ours was great. And then we had the beast from, um, and I'll, I, I can't remember her name for the life of me, but from Glee, uh, Coach Beast. She was on um, the, we did two episodes in, in Aspen. We didn't really film it in Aspen, obviously, but um, we had two episodes. We had the yodeling show. Um, and then we had, uh, we'll always have Aspen. And uh, so she was, she was the yodeler. She was like the queen yodeler. Um, so that, that was awesome. Just, and then 30 years later, 20 years later to see her on Glee was, was, was cool. But I, I, like I said, I don't think that there was one episode I didn't like. You know, I wasn't the lead in every episode. Some episodes I only had four or five lines. But I mean, to be honest, I was on a network television show, man. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Yep. And then you also did have Tara Reed in that graduation episode. Yeah, I did. Um, and, and, and Tara, uh, Tara was, was um, she lived in the same building as me. What was funny is, is um, like when, where we lived, we all lived like right around the corner from the network until we, you know, all moved into, we all kind of grew up and moved into houses. But we lived in this apartment complex. And the people that lived in this complex was like Maria Lopez. And we had uh, Christina Clark from, from Days of Our Lives. And we had uh, Patrick Muldoon, you know, the preferred stock guy. And we had um, this girl named Jessica Beale. She was living there. And, you know, and then this, this some young girl named Jennifer Love Hewitt. No one knew who she was. And like this, like, this was like the, the, this like celebrity building of like all of these like teenage stars. And uh, Tara, uh, Tara, excuse me, lived in um, I mean, I, I, two buildings down from me. And we became friends because we all hung out at the pool together. And I was friends with her prior to her getting on the show. And then when they do episodic, uh, you know, uh, guest stars, you know, we don't know who's auditioning. We have no clue. We just, we get our scripts on Sunday for a table read on Monday. And if there's like a guest star there at the table with us, we don't, you know, it's not like we get to sit in on the auditions. And then next thing I know across from me, I see Tara Reid, you know, and I'm like, dude, you're playing my girlfriend. Like, this is really kind of cool. And uh, we stayed in touch for a lot of years um, after that. And then she went on to, to obviously be um, the, the success that she is. I just saw that she just brought out a, um, I think she has a new purse line that she brought out or a jewel line or something that she's just brought out, which is pretty exciting for her. And now you have an organization, right? Called Dangerous Curves. I do, I do. It's, and now, uh, how, how did that episode that you filmed in California Dreams help you with Dangerous Curves as well? You know, I huge for the simple fact that that's you know when when we were on the show we were and and, and again I don't think any one of us really knew to the magnitude of what we were you know and 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 I, please don't think I'm being arrogant by saying that but like we Saturday morning like Saved by the Bell and California Dreams and then Hang Time and USA High like we were we were so many people's upbringing right and and for the college students we were the Saturday morning hangover show you know, the only time that we ever got preempted was by basketball, right? And sometimes we got preempted by it. But so we, we had such an influence on, on the youth. And I, I guess I never realized that until it was, it was a couple of years thereafter. And we would do all of these appearances. You know, we'd go around the country and we'd go to like Mall of America and the Warrendale Mall in West Virginia. And we'd sit at a table and fans would come up and they'd want to get autographs, which was awesome. Like that, I loved every, every, every second of that. And, you know, I would never, I would never let somebody not get an autograph. Like I was that guy, I would stay there until I didn't care, you know, if we were supposed to be done at two o'clock, if the line was out the door until midnight, I'd sit there because if it wasn't for these fans, uh, we would not have, have, you know, continued to be on the show. So with that said, um, when I did that episode and, and I had had some trials and tribulations, uh, you know, growing up with, with not with myself personally, but with, with friends that, that, that had, you know, either been in a car accident related to, to drinking or, or been in a, in a, in a situation related to drugs. And, um, so when we got to do that episode and I got to actually kind of be in that and, and then have to deal with the consequences that I dealt with as, as a character, it made me as, as, you know, I was a, an adult at that point, it made me kind of look at, at my life and go, wow, this is, this is really a, a big deal. This is, this is a problem. I've, I, I don't drink and drive. I never did when I was, you know, when I, you know, I'm not going to lie and say I didn't drink before I was 21 because I did, but if I did, I didn't drive. But then when that episode happened and we were doing all these appearances, it got to the point where I, I was like, man, I, I want to do something more than just go out and meet people and sign an autograph. I want to, I want a platform, if you will, to be able to stand behind and get other people to, to, to be with me. 
And um, so I started Dangerous Curves. And, and it, what it was, was I was going around the, the country and I was doing motivational speaking in, in middle schools and high schools and colleges about the effects of drinking and driving, you know, and the effects of drugs. And I could never talk from like the personal perspective per se of what I had done, but I can only talk from what I had seen. And my eyes had seen an awful lot by that point, you know, more than, more than anyone should ever have to see. And um, so I started Dangerous Curves and on the dangerous curves of life, you know, and, and we all are going to have them. And it's how we navigate these dangerous curves. So that, that started um, a, a huge platform, me, platform for me, which ended up stemming into Dangerous Words, um, which was just a, a, a secondary subsidiary company, which is where I went around uh, to high schools, middle schools. And I talked to, to students about the effects of bullying, you know, which is it's just an awful huge thing and, and it's, it's just disgusting and disgusts me to see it happen you know um so I, I then i was being brought into all these these schools and on top of that promoting the show so i'm going in there talking about you know the effects of these things but i'm like drawing fans into our show you know that that, that, that kind of i don't i wasn't the, the only reason to stay where it did but one of the reasons to, to to keep it the way that it was you know, so we got this whole fan base of people that might not have even ever known or seen the show because, again, it was a Saturday morning show. So if you didn't know, if you weren't looking for it sometimes, then when it went into syndication, when Ted Turner bought us with TBS, you know, we went into um, a Reicher um, uh, syndication package. I mean, it was, you know, it was all bets were off. I mean, we were airing and you name a country, we were getting fan mail from it, you know, so it was, it was, it was, it was huge then. So for me, that, that was a, that was a way for me to kind of pass on um, give back, pay it forward, if you will. And to this day, I mean, I still have dangerous curves and dangerous words. Um, I've written a play that, that, um, that I direct in high schools and I go in and I do a, a one week experience in, in, in high schools across the United States, um, where it's, it's about a drinking and driving accident set to music. And, you know, um, so, so we did that and I produced that, uh, uh, 40 or 50 times across the country. Um, so yeah, so it, it's a huge thing for me. Hugs, not drugs, man. Not drugs. How hard was it filming that final episode? Yeah, all those tears you saw in the end, they weren't fake. <laughs> they weren't, they were real. Um, I, I think every good thing must come to an end and that's the reality. And we, um, I think we went out at the right time. I think we probably could have done one more season and I think we probably would have had the, the fan base, but um, I think Peter, I think, I think they pulled the plug at the right time. So for us, it was unexpectedly expected, if you will, you know, and um, the, I, I, I'll never forget, you know, that, that group hug at the end, like none of us, none of us wanted to let go, you know, and I, 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 it was hard for Diana and I, and it was hard for Jenny and Jay, but nowhere near as hard as it was for Michael and, and Kelly and, and um, uh, William. Like they're because the, they 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 grew up together for, you know for the five years you know we I came on third season so I was only in for three Jay came on second season so you know so it was just it was not that there was ever like the small family the medium family then the big family I mean, we were all family but I know for them that it was it was probably a little bit harder to say goodbye um, and you know Michael Kelly Jay and or excuse me um, and William they all they all still live you know close to each other and see each other on a regular. You know, Diana and, and Jay and I, you know, we, we, I don't want to say we flew the coop, but, you know, Jay moved to Australia and I stayed in LA for another five or six years. And then um, I ended up moving. Um, I just, I'd gotten done with Hollywood. You know, I, I was kind of done and, and I, I had done a handful of pictures thereafter and, and I had a, you know, I was doing fine and I was working regardless where I was, you know, airplanes can get you anywhere. And I was working more out of state than I was in state. So I, um, I moved away. Um, I, I met a girl um, on a bus in Nashville. I got married and had a, had a couple of kids and um, I, I settled down in Florida. And then now just, I, I was bi-coastal for the next, you know, now last 25 years. Yep. So after California dreams, then, like you said, everybody kind of went their separate ways, did their own thing and then, but still kind of stayed in touch. One of the things that took place um, a few years ago is there was a reunion on the Jimmy Fallon show. But unfortunately, you weren't there. So I was can, not. So can you tell us where you were that night? Yeah, ironically, none of uh, it, it was just season one, you know, um, like, and I, I can't remember, was, was Jenny Kwan on the show? 
Was she on Jimmy Fallon? Jen, Jenny was on there, so she she joined in two. Yeah. Okay, so was, so it was season one and two, and Brent. I know that Brent was there, Brent Gore, and then um, yeah, I I honestly I I I wish I had some kind of like you know grand excuse that I was filming in you know Timbuktu and I was I was otherwise engaged. Um, I, Diane and I weren't asked uh, straight up. We were we were not asked, and then um, Jimmy years later had made a comment like that he'd like to get you know season three cast on there and, and said my name and diana's name in that because jimmy was a fan he wasn't like just a talk show guy that was like you know just getting a cat he actually loved the show um so and and i mean to this day i mean he's still there's been other episodes where he's mentioned the show and referenced the show and stuff like that but no i i, I honestly i mike i wasn't invited okay so, well jimmy i'm sure jimmy's gonna be watching this I mean, of course he is. Because, and Jimmy, and, and I said this in Jay's episode, I was in a commercial with Jimmy Fallon. Okay. For the MTV Video Music Awards 2005. Okay. You can barely see me in it, but I right. was there. Right. Uh, but I was there right behind Jimmy Fallon. So Jimmy, if you're watching this, you have to get season three, California Dreams. And I think it's time you invite me on your show too, Jimmy. I think that, that would be nice. I, Mike, you should come in as our, you know, as, as kind of like our, our promoter and, you know, and our friend, you know, so. I, I think we can work it out. So we'll be in contact with Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. You, Jimmy, you let your people know that, that we'll be getting people to talk to you. And if you yeah. don't have people, you just call us and we'll get you some people. Call us. We, we, we've got the time. We're willing to come on, Jimmy. I mean, we can find it. Yeah. And now um, what are you guys doing uh, now? You guys are getting together for comic cons, correct? And Good. We are. Yeah, we, we, we all got back together. Um, the gentleman that did Saved by the Max, and I'm not sure um, if you're familiar with that restaurant that they did for Saved by the Bell, uh, they had done a pop-up restaurant and they had asked us uh, if we wanted to do a pop-up at the Max. So we ended up doing a two-night engagement uh, in LA. It was two years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was just two years ago. And we all, we all got together. The only person that couldn't join us was was Jay because it was just ridiculously expensive for him to fly over um, for a two day gig. But we all got together and, you know, we sang live. I did, you know, as well did with Barry coughing there and, and um, uh, Steve Terrell couldn't get there. But Jenny and Kelly and we had um, Ryan Cabrera, who was there um, doing some some vocals for us, um, doing the kind of, he was our headliner and singing um, all of my parts or Jay's parts just because, you know, we couldn't. And so we did that and it was, it was ridiculously successful. Like it sold out like in like minutes from what we were told. So then we all kind of like rekindled that, like, hey, let's do this again. Let's have some fun. Da, 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 da. And then, you know, and then we did all these talk shows in LA and, and all this promoting. And it, it was, you know, like the fans, it was as if they never left. Like, it was just like, it was like, they just pushed pause and like, oh, it's back on. And then they came back out, you know, they came out in droves. So then we all got contacted by, by a, a, a promotion company asking, hey, you know, would you be interested in doing some comic cons? And I had done a handful uh, for, for another feature that I had worked on. Um, so I'd done a little bit of the horror circuit, comic, horror circuit comic cons. And then um, this one came up. So yeah, so I know that, that Kelly has signed on and Jenny signed on and Mike has signed on. William is kind of hit or miss just because of his practice that he has now being a doctor. Um, and then Diana, I'm going to be very honest with you, Mike, after the show canceled, um, we didn't hear from Diana for a while, like a long while. Like, I, I'm not sure where she went, you know, um, no, no clue. And then recently she's popped back up and I, I haven't spoken to her. Uh, I'll be honest with you. And I don't know if any of the cast members have either, but I know that, that she was kind of MIA for a long period of time. And, um, and then all of a sudden she's back. So I don't know if she's going to be joining us on, on some of these comic cons, but I hope she is. I'd love to see her. I saw, I saw an Instagram post, you know, um, because when you go 20, 25 years without seeing someone and it's like, ah, there she is, you know, so um, we all we all aged gracefully, I think, for the most part, you know, um, I think some of our, our hairlines started to chase our backs a little bit more than we had ever thought we wanted it to. And, you know, we start sagging in places we didn't think we'd ever sag. But, you know, um, I, I think we all weathered the storm pretty well. And um, I, I know we're all super excited to get back out there and see our fans again. And what's really cool is too, sometimes, you know, the best friends are the ones that you don't see for 10, 15 years. And when you finally see them, you pick up like nothing has happened at all. I've been in contact forever. 
Yeah, no, it's funny, you know, like we, we all text each other on birthdays, you know, and, and Christmas and, you know, the big holidays, we stay in contact that way. But I had not physically seen uh, Michael, Kelly, William and Jenny in 20 years. Like it had been literally 20 years. And I had been back and forth to LA a dozen times, and schedules, what have you. We never just we could never make them gel. And when we met, we met at the studio where we were rehearsing. Um, we had some studio time before the gig and we and it was literally like you said, Mike, it was like, it was like we picked up right where we left off. I, 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 I talk about it, you know, re- frequently now. I, I even have video of Michael, or excuse me, of, of Kelly and William in between rehearsal, um, just dancing to a song. And that's what we used to do. Like we they just out of nowhere, they just start slow dancing, you know, and, and, and we're just silly. And then we, after that rehearsal, we went to a restaurant right across the street from NBC that we used to go to all the time. And we sat at the same table we sat at. And it was as if the only thing that changed is that we, we were all, we all had kids we were all married or we all, you know, we just grown up, but you know, we, we picked up right where we left off. And now we're going to play the lightning round. The lightning round. Where I'm going to name you two things and you tell me which one you prefer. Yellow. Green. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. So do you prefer hot coffee or iced coffee? Hot coffee. Super Mario Brothers or Sonic the Hedgehog? Super Mario Brothers, of course. <laughs> Frozen yogurt or Italian ice? Italian ice. I grew up on Italian ice. Hulu or Sling TV? What is that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think probably Hulu, right? What <laughs> thing? Fishing or kayaking? Yuck. <laughs> neither um i'm definitely afraid of the worms it grosses me out and kayaking but that's work man <laughs> movie theater or arcade arcade oh my sister hates me a quick story gotta tell you so she had these 50 cent pieces you know the, the old 50 cent pieces and we used to have an arcade at the back of my street and i went into my sister's drawer one time and i stole all of her 50 cent pieces she had 42 dollars and 50 cents she'll never let me forget that and i stole them all and i traded them in for quarters so i could play pac-man oh uh, she hates me <laughs> absolutely hates me sorry i don't know it made me think of that fat free or sugar free uh, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Who does that? Um, probably sugar-free? <laughs> saved by the bell. Saved by the bell, the college years. Or saved by the bell, the new class. Oh, that's a tough one. I, I, I was not a fan of the college years, I'll be very honest with you. Um, though I was friends with Mark and Mario and, and Dustin and, and all of them. But I would say probably... That probably the new class, and the only reason is because we were, you know, we were all new, you know. So yeah, the new class. Jello or pudding? Pudding, chocolate. Paintings or photos? Photos. Bowling or tennis? Bowling. Just went. I just went two days ago. And scored one hundred and one. <laughs> Who was your favorite Ninja Turtle? Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, or Leonardo? Leonardo. Okay. Awesome. So what would you like to say to all the fans who are watching today? Thank you. Thank you. Um, honestly, you know, from the bottom of, of my heart and I speak for the other, you know, the rest of my cast and, and, and crew and everybody else that, that was blessed to be on that show. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for you guys, thank you. You know, we would not, you know, you guys kept us, you guys kept us where we were. Um, so that that's a huge, honest, thank you to you guys. And if somebody's watching this and they want to reach out to you or follow you, see what you're up to, where can they reach out to you? Um, you can check out, I have a new feature that just came out called Todd that just came out. We're on, um, you can rent it on Amazon and some other platforms that's out there, Todd. And um, you can get me at the official Aaron Jackson on Instagram. And you can get me just on Facebook under my name. And those are really the only platforms that I have. Um, or Instagram and Facebook, I should probably get, you know, Twitter and some of the other things, but I just, I'm really not technologically savvy. So I'm not really good at some of that stuff. But, so there's uh, no TikTok videos that we can follow no, you on? You know what? I, I, um, I just, and this is no joke, Mike, I've just literally gotten into TikTok. Like I, like within even my, both my daughters have, and, and Snapchat and all that stuff, they've been in it, you know, for, in it to win it kind of scenario, but I never got into it. And then within the last year, 
you know, someone's like, hey, did you see this TikTok video? And it was something so ridiculously stupid. I'm like, dude, that's funny. So then I got an account and then my daughter just bought a house. And um, so she's like, daddy, you're going to be TikTok famous. Let's do this. So she wanted, because we were decorating the house and I was redoing her kitchen and, you know, putting appliances and building and all this stuff. So we did all of these like, you know, videos where you, you start the phone in like this and you come back and reveal and then you go back in and all this. So we, I have all of these videos of, of the how to, you know, set your, 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 your has been, you know, your, your old man's a celebrity has been how to fix a house kind of show whatever I was going to do with it. And I just haven't done anything with it yet. Cause I think I'm afraid that I'm going to look like an idiot. So, um, but I, I, I do not have a TikTok. I have a, I do have a TikTok account. I do physically have one, you know, that my name is associated to. I mean, I think it's Aaron Jackson 626, maybe something like that. I don't even know how to check it. If you can tell me, I will. Um, but I, I haven't posted anything yet, but I will post on Instagram if I'm going to do that. But I, I am looking, um, I, I was never really big into the social media thing because when Dreams started, to be honest with you, Mike, the internet had just come out, right? And we were on this, this website called celebritysightings.com. And that was like, I remember doing my first interview with a real fan through a computer. And um, so like, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't birthed in that, that kind of era. Like it came in and I was already an adult. So when, when Facebook, I, I never even used Facebook up until, you know, probably the last 15 years, you know, um, I never had, you know, a MySpace or any of that stuff. So now with Instagram, you know, I'm, I'm now starting to build a following and I've only, uh, I say only, I've only got, uh, you know, under 5k right now. And I'd love to build that up. So any fans that are out there, any people that want to be friends with me, um, I post a lot of fun stuff about my daughters and about my, my ridiculous shoe collection. I collect Converse, not collect. I wear Converse. It's the only thing that I wear. And I've got, I've got uh, this ridiculous collection. So I, I show them often. And everyone watching, I, I never say this on my show, but you guys got to follow me too, because yeah. I never promote myself. I have yeah. it at the end of the show, but guys follow me too. Facebook. It's the official Mike Grand. Instagram official Mike Rand, Twitter it's Mike Rand, C O M like com, and the website's MikeRand.com. So follow me on there, YouTube, the Mike Rand. So I don't know how you're watching this or if you're listening to on whatever platform, or maybe at this point we're worldwide everywhere. Who knows? But Mike, are you following me? I I actually don't think I am, but I will. <laughs> well, I, am I following? I, I, you? I don't think I am, but I will. I will look <laughs> you up. Well, I'm going to start following you because I don't think I'm following yeah, you. We're, I don't think either one of us are. We're, we're going to follow each other. <laughs> well, yeah. there's how we get a follower. There we go. Thank you. I think I, 4, 000, I'm now at 4,191 once you take me. Yes. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, any, anyone that would like to reach out, um, please do. You know, I, I, uh, I, I, again, all that, that I ask is that we stay away from, you know, um, uh politics and and religion and hate and crime I, I did, my social media for me is 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 it's a way to connect and to, to be friends and share share the love and and spread news and, and joy and happiness it's not about it's not about hate for me so if, if you're a fan that wants to come in and start hating you're going to be gone quicker than you signed on it's all about making you laugh funny positive positive you know i i want my facebook something that my daughters are going to go on and they're not going to be embarrassed that, that their dad's you know doing this um i have, I have a 21 year old and a, and a 20 year old daughter i'm almost 20 my other one's almost 21 and um brian and alia if you're watching i love you girls and um they're it's like i, I never wanted to embarrass them so i think i stayed away from social media for a long time because of that as well so yeah all right so thank you very much for joining us here today well, thank you so much for having me, Mike. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you guys for watching. And we'll talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody.